Please welcome Mr. Barry Crimmins. Well, I'm sure, like you, when you heard about this event with Art Buchwald, Lewis Lapham, Paul Krasner, and Kurt Vonnegut, and Barry Crimmins, you said, who the hell is Barry Crimmins? <laughs> and I'd really like to thank the publicist at Seven Stories Press for making that such a pertinent question tonight. <laughs> Just kidding. So... Anyway, it's great. It's a great honor to work here. Hart Buckwald, as a child, I, I read his columns and realized, wow, you're allowed to make fun of these guys. And so, thanks a lot for 30 years of desperation. <laughs> Appreciate it. And Mr. Lapham has just always, he's just always been on the, on the left side of every cause, great cause, and. Uh, has done so much uh, with Harpers and so on. It's, just a, it's a great honor to appear with him. And of course, Kurt Vonnegut. Kurt Vonnegut to me, when I was a kid growing up, I was starting to develop this superstition that adults were just waiting to kill us. <laughs> and then I read his books and I said, wow, there's an adult that I don't think wants to kill us. <laughs> I, think he wants us to, I think he wants us to live. And that's really was a turning point in my life. And then Paul Krasner came along and he said, but you're allowed to kill yourself if you want to. <laughs> so. so it's uh, great. But anyway, this is, and of course, it's Sarah, multi-talented, which annoys me because I'm uni-talented. <laughs> but I think this might be the, the first time in about 15 years I've been the youngest uh, man on the bill. <laughs> It'll be over soon. So anyway, we were uh, talking about it. I actually, I have to apologize because I am sort of pissed off at Hot Fudge Sundays. <laughs> I, uh, there's a new show coming on television this fall. <clears throat> CSI DC. <laughs> this is a crime blotter of an administration, isn't it? They're just... Kurt mentioned... Uh, Kurt mentioned uh, Donald Rumsfeld. Donald Rumsfeld sucked four wars ago, you know? <laughs> He's like Nixon, you know? Nick Nixon was like herpes. You'd think he was gone, boom, he would flare up again. <laughs> Rumsfeld, yeah, remember that armor mess he got into over in Iraq? He, oh, he you know, he could have gotten out of that very easily. He could have just donated a couple of layers of his skull to the troops, and then we know they were at least protected against dangerous things like reason. <laughs> I don't know if you heard this today, this story, I, I, made, I made the the new heightened terror alert. I, I, maybe it's up to orange now, I, I'm not sure. Now, I, I've been confused about the terror warning since uh, Tom Ridge left and he doesn't guide us anymore, but he got <laughs> such an important job in the private sector with Crayola. You know, he's got to take care of his family, and that's that. <clears throat> oh, this is also sponsored by the, uh, the International Socialist Organization. Socialism, it's interesting. I live in the United States, a country where they teach you socialism's bad in public school. So, anyway, the story that came out today that you may not have heard, the BBC ran a story, Bush told some Palestinian politician that God has been talking to him again. <laughs> Apparently, he wanted him to reenact the Noah thing. <clears throat> Unfortunately, put Brownie in charge of building the ark, so... This is just the worst, though. I, you know, we used to have the New Deal and the Great Society. This administration will be known as the New Low. <laughs> you know, start needless war with lies. God, they destroyed the economy. They lost an entire city. <laughs> Anybody seen New York? I don't know. <laughs> the country is run by dim frat boys. You know, I'm tired of that. You're doing a heck of a job, Brownie doing a heck of a job. That guy, I mean, 
You know what protects George Bush? Sane people cannot listen to him speak for more than 30 seconds. <laughs> You say, oh, no, make it stop. <laughs> you have to have like a neighborhood crime watch just to watch one speech. <laughs> Boy, Bush always shies away from disasters at first, but then once he realizes he doesn't have to get his own feet wet, he's right there like the, the tsunami thing, remember that? At first, he was going to give him, oh, give me $11. And then <laughs> in a couple of days, he was donating money like a drunk watching the Jerry Lewis telethon. <laughs> Tsunami people are good folks, they're tsunamis, they're freedom lovers, they're... they love freedom, they're not freedom haters, they love our good people, tsunamis, wonderful, freedom loving folk, good folks. You know I resent Bush, I grew up in a little town called Skinny Atlas, New York, and Skinny Atlas is an Indian word that means beautiful lake surrounded by fascists. So I grew up with a lot of rich boys, and I was the poor boy. I was a poor boy. I mowed their lawn while they took tennis lessons and stuff. And uh, Bush, I know a lot of guys like him. And you know what he is? This is the kind of guy he is. If you beat him out to make the baseball team, the next day your father gets fired as the greenskeeper at the country club. I hate little pricks like that. I just I really do the worst, you know. And this is on C-SPAN, so let me repeat that. I hate little pricks like that. How you doing, George? Tsunami people. <laughs> Good folks. <clears throat> so anyway, he's hearing voices again. You would think, I don't know, I don't know, you would think maybe with all his connections in the pharmaceutical industry they could do something to quell that, but... <laughs> oh, speaking of which, I was, I was, in, I was at uh, Camp Casey for three weeks covering it for uh, Air America Radio, which is sort of like Kurt, your job at General Electric only not as glamorous, um, and uh, I was down there for three weeks uh, in the ditch waiting for that coward to come out, and he never, he never uh, showed up. And there would be these threats. Oh, the conservative radio stations, and they, you know, they hate Air America because Air America's, oh, the liberals do not like to listen to, they don't like dials and volume control, they can't, they don't want to hear, they're scared of the sound coming that's disembodied and they're superstitious and... They don't want to hear. When I listen to Rush Limbaugh and that stuff, I feel like I'm stuck in the back seat of my father's car. And another thing, blah, 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 blah. In America, blah, 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 blah. Shut up, Dad. Just drop us off at the dance. God, we ate the acid too soon, so. But I feel sorry for Bush, and let me tell you why. Because I know what he does for a living, because I've done it before. I know what it feels like to suck in public. Let me tell you why. Because at one point, someone hired me to act, and I'm like the worst actor ever. They hired me to act in this TV show, and I was surrounded by all these trained professionals amplifying how bad I was at acting. When I act, what happens to me is I get giant arms. This is just such a weird age to live in, to think that right now the most powerful man in the world, the Vice President of the United States, <laughs> that was a good matchup last fall, Cheney Edwards, Godzilla versus Bambi, huh? <laughs> we can disagree without being disagreeable. <laughs> we have a patriotic duty that if we run into Dick Cheney, we should startle him. Heart trouble, I thought he had the hiccups. Well, anyway, people get mad at me. They say, hey, mister, if you don't love this country, why don't you get out of it? I say, because I don't want to be victimized by its foreign policy. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>